In this episode of The Art of Boat Building, we're going to be finishing the sole of the Haven by the addition of the margin boards. I began by making a cardboard template matching the curve of the floorboards by hot gluing several pieces of cardboard together. Once I had that established, I then used a batten to create a fair curve for the top side. Now that I've got my fore and aft patterns for the margin boards made, uh, I needed to select some wood. So I found a couple of flitches that came out of the same tree right next to each other. And each one of them is uh, about an eighth of an inch to an inch and a quarter thick. So I easily can get two uh, boards out of one of these. So my plan is, is to kind of use them as a book matching to use one on the uh, starboard side, one on the port side. So I found this uh, flitch that has some really interesting figuring down here. And you can also see that it has uh, a little bit of a sweep in the uh, grain. So it's pretty close to the sweep of what uh, the pattern should be here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this out fairly big and cut a piece out of here squared up on the bandsaw so that I can then resaw it. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to cut this on a curve and let it go through the saw on that curve so that I only have to go through as little material as possible. So you can see uh, this uh, is actually almost 12 inches wide. So I don't want to square this up in order to run it through there uh, to keep as much material as I can. Um, as my saw, the maximum it can take is maybe about 10 inches or so. So anyway, I'm going to mark this out and then um, get to sawing and processing this wood.
now that I have all of the margin boards fitted, I now need to disassemble everything so that I can get the bottom sides of them oiled. So in order to do that so that I wouldn't lose track of which, where what board goes, I made this little chart. You can see it's basically a plan view of the uh, floorboards. And what I've done is I've gone through and I've numbered every board. So for example, here, uh, board number one would be one port, two port, three port, four port, five, and so on. And then on the back side, it's one aft port, two aft port. And then the same thing is on this side. And where it doesn't, isn't fore or aft, it's a center. Uh, so what I'm going to do is to disassemble all of the pieces and take them and lay them out on the floor basically the way they are in the boat. And I'll turn them all over first and uh, get some uh, oil finish on the bottom of them. The first board that I took out here, uh, you can see here on my chart, is CF, so center four. So now I'll take the board and I'll make a CF on it. I mixed up a little epoxy and used some of the walnut dust as a thickener. And I'm going to use this to help stabilize a couple of these little spots, which I don't mind them visually, but I want them to be strong. So I'm going to work some epoxy into those joints. As I'm preparing to put a finish on the floorboards, I was reminded of a passage that I read in one of my favorite uh, boat building books. And it's The uh, Common Sense of Yacht Design by L. Francis Herrenshaw. Uh, I believe the book is probably out of print. Uh, they did reprint it uh, probably 40 some years ago. Uh, it was originally written in around 1946, 47, somewhere around in there. But it has a very interesting passage in here where it says, two of the best ways to preserve oak are one, to steam it. it is quite well known that steam frames practically never rot. And he goes on to say down here that other ways to preserve oak or other woods is to saturate it with kerosene. 
kerosene is very penetrating and kills bacteria as well as everything else. And then he goes on to say down here that with the last two coats or three coats, it is well to mix some linseed oil with the kerosene. For when this is hardened, it will seal the surface of the wood that will have a tendency to keep water out. So what we're going to do is a slightly more modern approach than what is in here. Uh, what we're going to do is make some what is called Danish oil. And Danish oil is a mixture of three things, not just linseed oil and kerosene, but it would be linseed oil, a thinner like kerosene, and then some marine varnish. So there are two things that you can make Danish oil with. And first thing is the thinner. And the thinner can be uh, one of two things. Well, first of all, it could be kerosene, which is a little messy and, and fairly uh, has a strong odor to it. Mineral spirits is very much the same thing as kerosene. What really is the difference between the two is the flashpoint. So though kerosene makes an okay thinner, mineral spirits is better if you're using it for an actual fuel than kerosene is better because of its higher flash point and clearly you want it to burn. So both mineral spirits and kerosene are a byproduct of petroleum. Now their other choice would be turpentine and turpentine is actually distilled from a plant. It comes from the resin of a pine tree. Artists tend to use turpentine when they're mixing with their oil paints. And the reason being is turpentine has a little bit faster drying time than mineral spirits. Now, I happen to have both on hand, but it really doesn't matter which one you use. The outcome will pretty much be the same. So the third, or the, uh, sorry, the second component is then the linseed oil. And it's always best to use boiled linseed oil. Uh, raw linseed oil will absolutely never dry. Uh, boiled linseed oil does dry, and it's way too dangerous to buy raw linseed oil and boil it yourself. So commonly, almost at any paint store, you can get boiled linseed oil. And then the third component is varnish. I have some Interlux Schooner varnish here, and it has a UV protection in it, so I think that'll be actually good. How we mix Danish oil is there's lots of different recipes out there. Now one would be uh, half of it being linseed oil, a quarter of it being varnish, and a quarter of it being the thinner. So I'm going to do a, a more traditional one that I learned when I was in art school when I was finishing wood sculptures, and that is to use equal parts of linseed oil, varnish, and, lins and uh, thinner. So let's get to mixing up some uh, Danish oil. use one of these um, foam rollers to apply it with and then uh, use a brush to touch it up so and get a little bit out.
After I finished rolling the oil on the back sides, I then went through and wiped off the excess. So I found that doing those second and third coats on the back side, it was much easier to control if I used a brush. So in putting the oil on the front side, the first coat, I used a brush and I was able to really work it in to some of those surfaces that were a little more porous. So now what I'm doing that the oil has had 24 hours to sit after applying that first coat. And I've noticed that in some cases uh, it's a little, especially on the edges where I wasn't able to wipe it off quite as good, is it is still a little sticky. So what I'm doing is taking a little mineral spirits on a rag and going over it. And that takes that sticky part off. And so I'm going to go over all of the boards with that and get a good clean surface on there. Because the goal here is not to have the oil sitting on top of the wood, but penetrating the wood. And that's really how you get that hand rubbed oil finish. So any place where it looks like there's some buildup, I'm going to wipe that off. But while I'm doing it, I'm going to go over all of the board. One of the places that's really obvious is on the back side where the um, oil has slipped underneath the plastic. And you can see the couple of wipes of that mineral spirits. Cleans that off really nice. That's the last board. So now we can get another coat of oil on the boards. If any of you are wondering how much oil I've used so far, so the, uh, I've mixed up a second batch of oil here and it's uh, about 24 ounces uh, in each batch. So I've gotten uh, four coats of oil on that with the first batch. Um, so um, we'll put a little bit here in the container. Um, I had done this to begin with and just put Actually, I put more than that the first time and proceeded to kick it over. So I'm glad I didn't have the glass jar on the ground. Um, but nonetheless, I had probably three times that much oil in there and I had quite a mess to clean up. So in looking for a, a container to put this in, I found this old jar here. And it's funny, uh, I use this piece of plastic in here because um, I found this jar and my mother had needle pointed this jar uh, when my father retired and my dad's name was Don and he, she put little jobs in there for him after he had retired to, to work on. I just couldn't bring myself to uh, undo her little needle point so that's why I've uh, put this plastic underneath there. So let's get started uh, with our next coat of oil. Now that the uh, oil has been able to lay on there for uh, probably about 15 minutes or so, I think is how long it took me to do the whole thing. So now I'm going to take a clean cotton rag and I'm going to go over and wipe off any excess as I did with all of the other coats.
The finished bronze screws that I'm going to use are eight, number eights by one inch, and they're oval heads. You can see, dump some out here, that the head is this slightly domed oval shape. So I'm going to load up my wax ring with them and get putting down some floorboards. Well, I had ordered 150 screws, and what I miscalculated was the number of screws that I was going to need for the margin boards. So I just have those temporarily tacked in, um, and I'll need to order some more screws so I can get those finished up. Now this uh, deck on here will all gray out once it's out in the weather, like a lot of wooden decks do on boats. Now if I don't want it to gray out, um, then what I'll need to do is to oil it a couple of times each season and then it'll stay nice and bright. Uh, next episode we're going to start working on the combing and that will be a fun project and we'll see how that turns out. I'm pretty excited to see how it'll look. I want to thank everybody for speaking with me on the phone last month. We had a lot of great conversations about boat building and I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. Well, that's all we have time for in this episode. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you the next time on The Art of Boat Building. Mm -hmm.